Good morning, everyone. You can take the message outline from your bulletin, the green outline. <coughs> You've heard the expression, the only people who don't have any problems are those who are dead. Okay, I would say that is generally true, although I would probably add that those who die outside of Christ probably are having some long-term problems in the next life. But I want to talk about getting a biblical perspective on our problems so we don't give up our faith. And we're going to begin in 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 16, which says, Therefore, we do not lose heart. We don't lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yes, sadly, I would like to add, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes. Does that sound southern to you? <laughs> Fixing, fixing to go to the store, fixing to get in my car, um, fixing to go to work. We're always fixing to do something in the South. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is seen is eternal. So Paul says that his secret to surviving problems is fixing his eyes on eternal things. Now notice I did not say Paul's secret to solving problems. I said nothing about solving problems. I said his secret to surviving problems is fixing his eyes on eternal things. Someone asked Helen Keller, the famous blind person from the beautiful northwest part of our state, Florence, Tuscumbia, Ivy Green. She was asked, isn't it a tragedy to be blind? To which she responded, yes, but it is a greater tragedy to have sight but no vision. Many people have physical sight but they're not focusing on the most important things that can only be discerned spiritually. So you can maintain your faith in any problem if you will stay focused on three things. So we're going to look at three things. Just hold on to our faith no matter what. Number one, when you're depressed, when I'm depressed, open my eyes to the goodness of God. So when you're depressed, open your eyes to the goodness of God. This is a part of what Paul said a moment ago on fixing his eyes on eternal things. So in Psalm 27.10 it says, Though my father and mother forsake me, that would be sad, the Lord will receive me. I am still confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart. Now I understand that some people are naturally negative. It's not right or wrong. It's just some people's personality and character. And they spend all of their time focusing on the bad things in their life and in the world. And there's a lot of bad stuff that we could focus on. Sometimes people have ongoing problems in their marriage because they focus only on the negative things of their spouse and they close their eyes to the good things. The truth is, there is a lot of good in your life and in the world. It all depends on what we choose to focus on. One of my favorite sections of Reader's Digest Online is called Inspiring Stories. And it's about good things going on in the world and in people's lives that we usually don't see in TV, on the TV. My favorite Brotherhood publication is the Christian Chronicle. 
It's free. They will send it to you free. It comes out quarterly. And it talks about a lot of great things going on in churches of Christ around the world. Paul says in our text, I don't focus on what is seen, that is my problems, but on what is unseen, that is the goodness of God. Now what happens sometimes is that we take a problem and we blow it out of proportion and we end up with the chicken little syndrome. The sky is falling. The sky is falling. The sky is falling. When dealing with problems, Remember the good things God has allowed you to have, allows all of us to have. For one thing, we can be thankful that He has given us citizenship in a wonderful country. Is it perfect? No, it's not perfect. But when you look at countries throughout history, I would choose to be here. And when you and I think about America, this vast country from New York to California, Minnesota to, to Florida, we think of this, boy, this place is really big, lots of big cities. We are only 4%, our 330 million people, are only 4% of the world's population. 96% of the world lives outside of America. So not only have we been given citizenship here, but he has given us the opportunity to hear God's word and to respond to the truth and to the plan of salvation. How great is that? And he has given us the privilege of being able to attend church. Not everybody has that privilege or opportunity around the world. And he has given you and me the blessing to be able to serve him without fear. No one in this room is going to be beheaded because we're here. And there have been times in history when that was a very real possibility. So we are so fortunate. And there are so many people in the world who would love, they would love to have our problems. Oh, making a mortgage payment making a car payment, finding the right clothes to wear. Life is so tough. Many people in Western civilization don't realize how good they have it until one day it's gone. And Christians, it's kind of interesting, but a lot of times we attribute all of the good things in our lives to luck and all of the bad things to God. Something good happens. I was lucky. Hey, we're all lucky. You were lucky. I'm lucky. We're lucky. Something bad happens. Oh, why is God allowing this to happen to me? James 1.17 says this. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights. It is amazing how gratitude can minimize or neutralize depression. So when you're depressed, remember the things that you are thankful for. It will not solve your problems. It will not pay your bills. And it won't take away your pain. But it will put your problems in a spiritual perspective and give you an emotional lift. <coughs> And so the first thing in maintaining our faith is we need to keep our eyes open to the goodness of God. Two, when I feel defeated, open my eyes to the greatness of God. Not only is God good, but God is great. And in Psalm 96, 4, it says, The Lord is great. He should be praised at all times. And the greatness of God can be seen and is very evident in the physical creation. Take a look at any of the pictures in a National Geographic magazine. Now, don't read the articles because they're raging evolutionists. And have been ever since the magazine was founded in the 1880s. But incredible photography from the redwoods of California to the Grand Canyon of Arizona, to the picture of Yosemite on the, the Milky Way on the front of the bulletin, to the intricacies of a flower, to the birth of miracle, the birth of a baby, to say all of that 
randomly happen by chance would be like saying Webster's Dictionary was the result of an explosion at a book factory. <laughs> when you think about God's greatness, you realize that He is big enough to empower you to maintain your faith in tough times. And I have said nothing, I have said nothing about God taking away your problems. I hope He does. If anybody deserves it, it's this group. Right. Some of y'all are very high level of self-confidence. 1 John 4.4. 4. Look at this. You're familiar with this. The one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. In a very practical sense, this says God is greater than any problem you will ever face. And at the very least, this verse can give you victory over negative attitudes. But the truth is, sometimes the real problem is not our problem, it's how we choose to look at our problem. When we don't see life from a spiritual perspective, we get tired, discouraged, defeated, and feel like giving up because we have taken our eyes off of the greatness of the Lord. Now, He may not solve all of your problems, but He can give you the strength that you need to survive them with your faith intact. So there's a couple of advantages, I think, of coming to church on a regular basis. Looking at God's Word helps us keep our perspective. It reminds us that God is great and that He has our eternal welfare in mind. And when we sing, isn't the singing uplifting? That last song that Hank is teaching us, isn't that a beautiful song? Doesn't that have a beautiful tune? Oh, these songs are so uplifting. So when you feel defeated, look at God's goodness, look at His greatness, and remember that the Lord who created the world can give you the power to sustain your faith and have a positive attitude. Then three, when you feel alone, open your eyes to God's closeness. We all feel alone at times. We all are alone. We are alone at times. When you feel alone and isolated, remember two things. Number one, God is near and knows what is happening in your life. It says in Matthew 10:29. Not a single sparrow can fall to the ground without your father knowing about it. This, I'm here to tell you this is really not a discussion about sparrows. This is not about sparrows. Who cares about sparrows? One of the most common birds. Those millions of sparrows. Who cares about sparrows? God cares about every sparrow. And the point is, if he care, cares about a common bird, then he cares about you. So when you feel like no one cares, remember that God is not an impersonal force in the sky. He sees what's going on in your life just like He sees what's happening to every sparrow that we certainly don't pay attention to, or at least I don't. Maybe you do if you're a bird watcher. Two, your fellow Christians want to encourage you. Sometimes you feel alone because you're carrying a problem all by yourself. And you need the encouragement of your fellow Christians. So look at this passage in 1 Thessalonians 5.11. It says, encourage one another and build each other up. Just as in fact you are doing. We want this church to be a place where you can come and be lifted up and reassured that your faith in the Lord is not meaningless. It's not meaningless. This is Hebrews 12, 2. Let us fix. I have a lot of fixed passages today. Let us fix 
our eyes on Jesus. Don't fix your eyes on the problem. That will keep you discouraged. Fix your eyes on Jesus. Because in circumstantial or moral darkness, you need to know God is the light of the world and you are never far from His presence. So in Psalm 107, verse 14, it says, He brought them out of darkness and the deepest gloom and broke away their chains. So maybe you are in deep darkness and gloom. You've just found out your job is coming to an end. Your marriage is coming to an end. A health problem is starting. So how does he break away our chains? By causing us to realize that the things that are out of our control are not out of his control. And we learn that from the Bible. Jesus is in the business of giving people new eyesight. And by that, I mean a new perspective. In Luke 4, in the first public sermon of Jesus in the, his hometown of Nazareth, and the hometown crowd is always a tough one, he reads out of the book of Isaiah and he applies it to himself. And he says, I have come to give sight to the blind. And he wasn't talking just about physically blind people. He was including spiritually blind people who could not see their way out of moral darkness. Jesus comes to you and says, I want to show you the goodness of God and the greatness of God and the closeness of God and lift you out of emotional darkness and he does that by giving us a new perspective. So be like Paul and don't spend all of your time focusing on the negativity of your situation. Focus on the things that are unseen and from that Draw the strength that you need to maintain your faith and survive whatever it is that you're going through. So I have, a, I don't know how many questions, two or three. These are kind of personal reflection. Are you depressed? Do you feel like everything in your life is falling apart? Don't everybody raise their hand at once. <laughs> Well, if it's like a clinical type depression, then in addition to the Bible, you need professional help. But one thing that you can do as a believer is remember God's goodness and count your blessings. In fact, you know what we could do with our blessings? We could even name them one by one. Do you feel defeated by a certain problem? You can't see any answer no answer is in sight, and it keeps getting you down. Open your eyes to the greatness of God in the Bible and in His creation and say, Lord, help me to see that you are greater than the problem that I am facing and trust Him to give you that insight. Somebody says, well, that doesn't take away my problem. That doesn't take away my pain. No, but if we can have a different perspective, a spiritual perspective, it allows us to get through the pain with our faith intact. And that's what it's about. We don't want you going through a problem and coming out of the other side of it and saying there is no God and serving the Lord is worthless. We cannot believe that we are the only people who have suffered physically. Our brothers and sisters throughout history have gone through difficult times and have endured problems and, and beatings. Hebrews 10, hang in there, don't give up. Do you feel alone? It's a beautiful day outside, 
but in your heart there's nothing but pain and darkness. Open your eyes to the closeness of God. So this passage in 2 Timothy 4 probably is the last chapter of the last book Paul wrote. And according to secular history, died. It says this. Everyone had abandoned me. But, and I have said many times, thank God for buts. <laughs> Everyone had abandoned me. But the Lord stood with me and gave me strength. So will you remember that? Yes. Will you keep that in your heart? Will you remember several things? That the Lord is with you and gives you inner strength to maintain your faith? That Jesus says, I am the light of the world and gives you hope? Don't try to live the Christian faith and the Christian life alone. And remember that you can be encouraged by God's Word in a group only if you're here. I know you can go online. You can get content online, but you can't get companionship. At least not yet. Maybe they'll have 3D TV and someone, and I can come out onto the TV and hug you or something. <laughs> maybe, that, maybe that's like 4D or 5D TV. Who knows what they're going to come up with, right? Maybe it'll be like Star Trek and you can kind of melt and just transport yourself somewhere else and then come back into human form. I don't know. But for now, for now, you can get all the content you want on the internet. But you have to come here for the companionship. I'd like to close with a prayer. And I put it at the end of the outline so you can have it and you can adapt it for your own use. So we're going to close with this, conclude with this, and then Hank is going to lead us in an invitation. So would you bow with me? <clears throat> Father, I don't understand everything going on in my life, but help me to see your goodness. Help me to see that you're greater than any problem I have. Help me to understand that you love me and care for me. As much as I know how, I want to give you all of my life and ask you to help me with all of my problems. Thank you for being close to me and going through my problems with me. I am looking to you for inner strength. In Jesus' name. Amen. At this time, you may stand as we sing.